Welcome to Clinical Minute, Multiple Sclerosis Treatment and Reproductive Planning. Jessica is 24 years old and was married five months ago. She was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis two months ago after 12 months of symptoms, which included blurred vision and a tingling sensation in her legs. She has been taking fingolimod, which is a disease-modifying treatment, since the diagnosis. She presents to you, her primary care practitioner, for an annual exam. She is currently using condoms for contraception. How do you counsel Jessica? Multiple sclerosis, or MS, is an autoimmune disease that affects the central nervous system, which includes the brain, optic nerves, and spinal cord. It is characterized by multifocal inflammatory and neurodegenerative demyelination and varying degrees of axonal injury. The demyelination results in the formation of plaques or lesions on the myelin sheath, which in turn impair nerve conduction. This results in diverse neurologic symptoms, including impairment or loss of vision, bladder and bowel dysfunction, and cognitive changes. MS often begins with an asymptomatic period and can present as an isolated syndrome, such as optic neuritis. The goal of MS treatment is achieving NIDA, or no evidence of disease activity. This means there are no new lesions on MRI, no progression to disability, and no symptoms suggesting relapse. Treatments used for MS fall into two categories those used to manage MS symptoms, and those that reduce the frequency and severity of relapses. The latter are referred to as disease-modifying treatments, or DMTs. DMTs are not intended to treat the symptoms of MS and are not curative. They reduce the accumulation of lesions within the brain and spinal cord and may delay the progression to disability. The three available oral DMTs are fingolimod, trade name Gelenia, dimethyl fumarate, trade name Tecfidera, and teraflunamide, trade name Albagio. There are also several injectable DMTs. Interferon beta-1A, trade names Avanex and Rebif, interferon beta-1B, trade names Betaseron and Extavia, PEG interferon beta-1A, trade name Plegridi, glatirumer acetate, trade names Copaxone and Glatopa, and Daclizumab, trade name Zinbrita. Finally, there are three infused DMTs that are currently available. They are Natalizumab, trade name Tisabri, Alemtuzumab, trade name Limtrata, and Ocrelizumab, trade name Ocrevus. While disease-modifying treatments reduce the frequency of MS relapses and may delay progression to disability, they can cause significant immunosuppression. Because the level of immunosuppression can be similar to that seen with chemotherapy, it is important to consider opportunistic infections when patients on DMTs develop an illness. The oral DMT teraflunamide trade name Albagio, is associated with severe birth defects. Reproductive age female patients on teraflunamide should be using highly effective contraceptives. Women who become pregnant while taking teraflunamide should undergo an accelerated elimination protocol to reduce serum drug levels more quickly. None of the DMTs are recommended for use during pregnancy, and most are not recommended during breastfeeding. Generally, DMTs are stopped one to six months prior to conception, depending on the agent, and restarted after breastfeeding is completed. The next two slides list additional information about DMTs in pregnancy and breastfeeding. This slide lists information about DMT use in pregnancy. Note that none of the DMTs are recommended for use during pregnancy. This slide lists information about DMT use in breastfeeding. Note that most of the DMTs are not recommended for use during breastfeeding. Glatirumer acetate, trade names Copaxone and Glatopa, is considered probably compatible with breastfeeding. 
the prescriber should discuss with the patient the risks and benefits of using this DMT during breastfeeding. Patients with MS are at risk for a number of comorbid conditions, including hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, and osteoporosis. Clinicians caring for women with MS should pay attention to interventions to prevent these conditions, screen for mental health conditions such as depression, address the woman's activity level to minimize fatigue, and ensure that recommended vaccines are administered. Prior to administration of any vaccine, check to ensure that it is considered safe for patients with MS, especially for those on medications that cause immunosuppression. Clinicians who are caring for women with MS should consider the following regarding MS management. Clinicians should encourage adherence to DMTs given the potentially progressive course of MS. Monitor for possible toxicities or side effects of any medications used for treatment of MS. Encourage daily physical activity. Encourage vitamin D and omega-3 fatty acid supplementation. Encourage vaccination. Note that inactivated vaccines are safe for patients with MS at any time in their life cycle, including pregnancy. Establish a multidisciplinary approach due to the complexity of MS. A reproductive health plan is important for any woman of reproductive age, but especially so for women with MS, given the potential toxicity of DMTs. Consider using these questions to discuss a reproductive health plan. How important is it to you to avoid pregnancy now? What would you do if you became pregnant now? What is your desired family size? What is your intended timing for pregnancy? Are there health issues that need addressing before becoming pregnant? For women with MS who are using DMTs, it is very important to avoid pregnancy and to carefully plan the timing of pregnancy to ensure that DMTs are halted one to six months prior to conception, depending on the specific agent. This approach requires the use of highly effective contraceptives. This tool can be helpful in illustrating the typical effectiveness of contraceptive methods. The tool makes clear that the only non-permanent forms of highly effective contraceptive methods are the contraceptive implant and the IUD. Clinicians should educate reproductive age women with MS about pregnancy-related topics. They should tell women that MS does not affect fertility or the ability to carry to term. The goal is for patients to be relapse-free for one year prior to attempting to conceive. DMTs should be discontinued one to six months prior to initiation of attempts to conceive. The clinician should check the prescribing information for the DMT to determine the correct time period. New DMTs no longer have pregnancy category designations. Instead, descriptions are used. All DMTs should be stopped in the event of an unplanned pregnancy. This slide illustrates the common MS disease course during pregnancy. Pregnancy does not appear to affect the overall course of MS, although the frequency of relapses may change during pregnancy and the postpartum period. Because pregnancy is associated with an increase in sex hormones that decrease immunologic activity, the frequency of symptom relapses often decreases in pregnancy, particularly during the third trimester. Following delivery, hormone levels rapidly return to baseline levels, and the frequency of relapses often increases during postpartum. It's important to work with the patient's neurologist to manage the increase in MS symptoms postpartum and to plan the timing of restarting withheld drugs. Like pregnancy, breastfeeding appears to have no effect on long-term disease course. Breastfeeding should be encouraged and DMTs withheld while breastfeeding. Some data suggests that breastfeeding may prevent relapses in the postpartum period when the patient is not on a DMT. For women who choose not to breastfeed, DMTs should be restarted immediately after delivery. When counseling Jessica, an important first step is to understand her reproductive plans 
and the intended timing of pregnancy. You ask, how important is it to you to avoid pregnancy now? She tells you that she desires to delay pregnancy for at least two years until she completes her graduate program. You tell her it is very important to be using highly effective contraception while taking DMTs because of the potential toxicity during pregnancy. You describe the contraceptive methods in order of real use effectiveness, from most to least effective, and explain that the IUD and contraceptive implant are the only non-permanent methods in the highly effective category. She tells you that she would like to use the contraceptive implant. You take steps to help her obtain an implant within the next week. In addition, you explain the need to plan future pregnancies carefully with her neurologist so that he or she can oversee stopping fingolimod. You recommend at least two months off fingolimod before conception. Finally, before saying goodbye to Jessica, because of the immunosuppressant properties of fingolimod, you emphasize the importance of regular health screening, such as cervical cancer screening, and of regular labs according to her neurologist's recommendations.